Welcome to the tutorial for MindMeister. MindMeister is a concept mapping or mind mapping software. Allows you to do some collaboration, some brainstorming, and visually represent your understanding of a concept or a flow, how things interact together. Again, this is a mobile app and a web-based app. We're going to be demonstrating how you used the web-based app component. As usual, you need to have an account in order to do things with your material and store them and send them to yourselves and, and have them so you can access them later. So here's our screen. It's mindmeister.com and once you get to this spot you can sign in. You can actually tie it right to your Facebook account and sign in that way. But uh, you have to start with sign up for free. The green box over here and once you do that then you will have an account and you can sign in. I'm gonna do that now. And when you get your account open the free version is the basic version. They're only going to allow you to store about 10 to 12 maps here on the site. So as you use a map and you start getting close to that 10 to 12, you would need to, um, you know, if it's your own personal device, you can upgrade for not a lot of money if you use this a lot. From a student's perspective, they're not going to do that. They're just after they uh, do something with theirs. Eventually, we have to make sure that we, uh, you know, delete all these, wipe all these out. At this particular point, I want to show you the menu along the left side. All maps is going to list all of the maps that we have here. These are two maps that I've uh, created one a few days ago, uh, actually about a, two weeks ago, and one a minute ago. Uh, the second folder is recently modified, so if I had some maps that I had just recently done some work with and I wanted kind of a shortcut to get to that, then we're good to go. Public maps are some maps that are out there for the public to view. If you wanted to get an idea of what some people are doing with this, you can actually go and look at those types of maps, or they could be your own maps that you've made available publicly. And then trash for where you can throw things. So let's take a look at the top. This is our toolbar area. We have new mind map, which is where we're going to go, new folder. So these are folders that are already defaulted here. You can create a folder if you wanted to have mind maps that you use from a demonstration purpose to show students what they can do with an instructional strategy like concept mapping, where they're grouping things together, showing the flow, showing the, um, the interaction, if you will, or um, uh, you know, how things work together. You can go ahead and create a folder for a class and then put all of the items for that class in that particular folder. Again, you only have about 10 to 12 free maps that you can have, so I don't think that folders is really that relevant unless you end up really liking this. You have your own device and you would like to um, pay a little extra for the upgrade and you get some more bells and whistles like you always do. So to create a new mind map, And this gives us a, uh, a template area where we can pick out various types of uh, mind maps. There's the blank where you can start from scratch. There's a brainstorming one where you kind of have, uh, you'll put your central topic in the middle and you will identify what goes into all of those uh, outside areas. There's a to-do list. Uh, there's a meeting layout. There's one for a SWOT analysis and one for a project plan. And you also have a template library which shows a few more down here that you can get to. You can scroll. There's a business plan, an R&D plan, lesson planning, essay writing, website planning, project management process. So there's a number of different things here that are helpful. Um, I'm going to show you, there's also some categories. So here's some categories related to um, concept maps that would work in a business environment. Here's some educational ones, essay, course, lesson, entertainment, productivity, to-do list, getting things done, time management, and a technology template. So you can choose any you know template uh, that you want. 
or go up to recently used. I have I don't have any. Uh, let's go. Let's pull one of the business ones out. And we'll just hit on brainstorming, and we'll say we want to use this, and we're going to create a concept map from this particular template. So as you can see, it's kind of laid out for you here. On the right side, you have a properties area where you have the ability to adjust your font size. You got bold italicize. You can deal with colors, add various types of uh, emoticons here. You can insert an image, add some various notes along the way, links, files. Uh, tasks. So if you wanted to say, hey, here's here's an action item here and we want to assign it to somebody or something specifically needs to be done, you could go ahead and do that. And so all you would do is, I just clicked in that brainstorming box. And I'm going to type something here. This is Project 1. You then click in the action points items. We have point 1 and point 2 over here. We can identify what those things are by clicking in them and, and typing some individual information. We can go over here to the right and click on the problems. Put some text in there where that problem is. I just hit the box where it said problem one. I can go ahead and type whatever I want. I can add an image. Any of those things in the properties boxes over there that right. I could go down there and prioritize these things, high, medium, and low. And in the bottom right, there's some ideas. So again, this is a template. You can utilize that in a number of different ways and uh, works pretty nice. And it gives you an idea of what you can do with some of the templates. Templates are really easy to work with. Um, if you assuming that you pick the right template. There's a lot of other toolbar features here um, along the top next to my map. So you got the plus, this little circle with an arrow means you're going to add on to one of these particular items, uh, cut and some of these. I'll explain these more um, in the second part of this when I want to show you how you build one from scratch because I think seeing how some of these tools work is really, really helpful when you're um, doing this from scratch. And then down here is your share this map. So it gives you a number of different ways to share about it, uh, this map. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so I'm back at my particular home screen for my Mind Meister. And I'm going to click on a new map. You can see that uh, we do have the two mind maps in there that I did already. We have a time value of money mind map. I'm just going to show you that in a second here. And then we have the project one that I just started on. But I do want to show you how to build one from scratch, a completely new mind map. But before we do that, I'm just going to click on the time value of money map. And we're going to open that. So I could continue to work on this and add various things uh, to it. But you can see I have the time value of money concept right in the middle. We have a present value over to the right, future value to the left. Um, what is your compound period up top? Are you looking for an amount today? Notice that I've changed some colors of some of the, the bubbles. I've changed some colors of some of the text. And I do want to point out to you, if you look to the left here, where the future value is over here, Notice how there's a minus here, and you can actually see because it's exploded out the branch. But over here on the present value, it's a plus. And al although this just tells you that there's something there, you just can't see that. We got our little property box uh, in the way. So I'll minimize that thing right there so you can see. And notice how they both have a minus next to it. And you have the expanded out um, items. If I go ahead and click on that minus again, it shuts it down. That way you can kind of, you know, do some more work around here and go from that perspective. Again, to open up the properties, which normally defaults to open, you just hit on the properties button. And again, to minimize it, there's that little double box up in the top right corner there of the properties window. Okay, so... Let's go back to 
my maps and we're gonna start a new mind map I don't want to use a template I just want to use a new blank one and if we click on top rather than recent we can see that the one in the top left corner there is the blank so if I click on the blank hmm, not good I've run out of maps already well I have to eliminate some maps there we go so I've uh, gotten rid of some maps so that I still have space to make a new map I've hit on uh, the new mind map blank I now can click right inside this little spot call it what I want or just type it in okay so now click outside the box you can do anything that you would want with something else the case that we're in the middle we have two things that we can do we can hit the plus sign and that'll give us a bubble off to the side so whenever you want to move something from one to the other add on to this if you want to move it around you can select it you can select some particular words do what you need to do but if you want to add on to it all you're going to do is hit the plus sign Okay, so that's this plus sign right here and then that's going to give you the particular box you can then type in that particular box you want to add on again you just make sure that you have the step one box that first box now and you hit the plus sign you're going to add on to that particular box hit the plus sign again to go beyond that once you once you enter something in that box let me get rid of our properties panel here and then keep adding on if I would like to um, go back to the main item you just click on that if I want to go back to the step one and add something else you click on that you see how it went from gray to blue and it has now added another item off of step one and again just keep adding your item so if you want to build one from scratch you can build one from scratch you can move it around if you need more space say you decide you need more space on this side you can grab it and move it around I'm just moving this with my finger right now you can also do it with the stylus again you got the properties if you'd like to do something fancy you want to change your font you want to change your coloring that's how I did that in the previous one that I showed you and then when you get to the end you can share this map you can invite some people to see it this particular map is private so you can only access this mind map yourself because you created it but you can also share it and you can invite some various people and basically you're going to do that with some email addresses and so forth so you would type the email addresses in there and you would send an invitation to say hey view my mind map that would allow you then to send it to yourself if you wanted to get it out of here and and send it to yourself maybe to do something else and in, in, uh, incorporate it into a particular project or you can send it uh, have students send it right to the faculty um, send it to another device and then you can upload it to Dropbox or any of those other tools so that's pretty much it that's all there is to it this is mindmeister.com